Hello and welcome to week two of our Wellbeing Wednesday with me, Paul Griffiths. I hope you're all well. Um, I decided today to spend a bit of time in the outdoors. Um, don't worry, I'm staying safe. Um, I haven't really washed my hands, but there's nobody here. Um, I love the outdoors. Um, it's where I've sort of grown up. Uh, everything when I'm here, uh, all my stress levels and my anxiety, uh, they all, they all uh, subside. So um, just as I told you last week, if you do get the chance to go outside, and even if it's for a walk, then I would highly recommend you do this. Put myself a cup of coffee. Hmm, pretty good if I do say so myself. What is determination and resilience? When was the last time anybody uh, was watching this was determined and resilient? I'm not gonna lie, I've uh, almost got myself in some pretty serious issues. I've almost got myself killed four times. I almost froze to death once in a tent. That was pretty scary. Um, almost fell to my death on a cliff in, uh, where was that, the Ben Nevis, the Tower Ridge, about 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I was pretty frightened. And uh, my attempt on Mont Blanc turned out to be a bit of a disaster and took the wrong way. I've also chosen to hang around with some pretty insane people who've also pushed the boundaries of their existence. And a lot of them say when I ask them, why are you so <laughs> crazy? Why do you do these things? Um, they always say uh, the same thing back to me, which is, it's the only way that I'm reminded that I'm alive. We all have a comfort zone and we can't always see that comfort zone. And a lot of people always talk about this. What is a comfort zone? Well, when we were watered and fed and we're in our beds and we're all safe and that's pretty much okay if we go down to shopping and Sainsbury's, it's all our comfort zone. That's all very well and good, but we don't really grow there. We don't really um, find out who we actually are. You find out who you are by pushing the envelope. And what that means is by pushing yourself to a place where you're actually in a little bit of discomfort, or in my case, sometimes quite a lot of pain. If you wanted to run a marathon, for example, how would you run a marathon? You would need to, first of all, plan it in your head and train for it. You would need to think about what nutrition and what food you're putting into your body. You would put it in the calendar and then you would start training. You would look it up and then you would eventually go for it. The problem is though, most people think they can get the things they really want by everything that they've been taught in the past. So let's just say for the sake of arguments, we're here today, and this is you. Everything that you are exists on everything that's happened to you in the past. Everything that you've put into your brain comes from your experiences. And your experiences are pretty limited these days, especially with COVID. So what do we need to do? We need to have a goal and we need to be determined to reach that goal. But how are we gonna get that goal? Well, let's just say, the goal exists in the future. We will not come to the future. We don't go to the future, we can't, because it's always the present moment. The future will come to us. And if we wanted to run a marathon, and if we wanted to, I don't know, say cross Antarctica solo, or row across the Atlantic, the things we spoke about last week, how are we going to do that? We need to make ourselves look more like the thing that we're going after. I was in the uh, Dolomites once and there was a huge race. People were trying to run across the Dolomites. The Dolomites, for anybody who doesn't know, in our Italian mountain range. And people were trying to do stages of this mountain and they were going to, it was, it was 101K and one one was a race, one was 47K and so on. They were gonna run 101 kilometers in 24 hours. No rest, no nothing. A lot of people failed but a lot of people did it, and I interviewed some of them. And one guy in particular, I asked him, what was it like to be that tired? And he replied to me, it's that hard that sometimes you hallucinate because you're lacking of sleep and exhaustion. He said at one stage, he saw a teddy bear in a phone box on top of the mountains, and he stopped to call his mum to tell him he was okay. That was sleep deprivation, and he must have pushed himself, pushed himself and pushed himself to the very, very limits. Our armed forces do this. Our uniformed pe people in the NHS are working extremely long hours to keep us all alive and keep us all safe. So if you wanted to have a look at what determination is, we only have to look at police forces, our NHS, armed forces, athletes, professional footballers, explorers, and so on. The question is, what do you want to do? 
when will you next be determined? So what I'd like you to do is go away in your groups and talk about the time that you were most resilient and most determined. Discuss in your groups and then I would like you to stand up one at a time in front of your teacher and present when you were really resilient and when you were really determined. After that's done, I would like you to go back to your notepads, back to your textbooks and write a quick story of when you were determined. If you like, we could even do this. We could actually turn this into an exercise. Why don't you set yourself a goal to do something by the end of the year? It might be to walk 10 miles, it might be to do something on your bike. As long as it's safe and your parents know about it and your teachers know about it, why don't we set ourselves a goal, write it down and see how we can best be achieved. We're never going to know ourselves, really, unless we push ourselves to find it. We exist in worlds where we can mostly just watch TV, we can sit around, we can even have our food delivered, watch Netflix, play games, text message our friends, check emails and so on. And before you know where you are, most of our life is gone. There was a famous philosopher called Seneca and he said, life is not necessarily short, it's long enough to do the things that we want to do with it. It's just that we choose to do things that make it short. Sitting at home, doing nothing. So now we're all standing still. I want you to go out and plan something that you want to do. And what do you need to do it? Every single day I get up, I have a cold shower. Don't try this until you're trained. I have a cold shower. I do 100 press-ups and I run five miles every single day because I don't want to be a statistic. I want to keep myself fit and honour the body that I'm in. Unfortunately, nobody's going to give me another body halfway through my life, so I've tried to look after the one that I've got. So pay attention to what you're doing. Think about the things you're putting into your body. Resilience and determination will come to you. And the more you do it, the better prepared you'll be when something really tough happens, you'll be able to withstand it. If you were cold a lot of the time, like I am in my cold shower, when you're really cold outdoors, you can stand it. Also, I'd like you to do something for me. Get yourself outside. I love this environment. It's me. It's when I'm most peaceful. The greatest risk of all is not doing the things that we really want to do with our lives and basing it on the bet that we can buy ourselves the freedom to do it later on. That's a famous quote, which means we are young enough, or indeed you are young enough, to push yourselves and be the best version of yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror, and if you don't like something, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up about it. Change it. Do something. Become the thing that you're going after. And how you'll do that? is by being determined and by being resilient. So let's start now. Let's go away, have a discussion with the other group, or write a story or put a plan down when you want to be determined and resilient. I met a guy once, long ago. He'd fallen and trapped his arm in a canyon. He was not in a good way. He ended up having to survive by cutting his own arm off to survive. His name was Aaron Ralston, and I remember meeting this guy, and he was absolutely phenomenal. They later made a film about it. I can't imagine being like that. There's lots and lots of stories of determination and resilience. Ernie Shackleton, Scott of the Antarctic, Hillary, people who are doing Everest right now. Go away and look up these people who were determined. People in the Second World War fought for our freedom today. They were determined, and without that resilience, and without that determination, we wouldn't be here today. So, God bless you all. I'll see you here next week. Go and look up resilient people, write an essay, write a story about when you were last resilient, and let's discuss in our groups right now, when was the last time you were determined or resilient? I'll end on this. A little salmon always swims upstream, and he can do this for miles upon miles to breed. He always flows against the river. He swims against the flow and that's what we must do. Let's look at nature. Let's take a good long look. Determination and resilience is all around us and the best way to start looking is probably at nature. So God bless. Namaste. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Take it easy.